my son, who's 12, said to me, Mom, why do you cover everything with leaves? You know, nothing's better than having to explain your work to a 12-year-old. It really calls you to the table, to the mat. And um, I said, well, honey, um, you know, I'm not really sure, but I think I want them to sort of be somehow between hybrid um, objects or somewhere between plant and animal. And <laughs> he went, Mom, they, nobody thinks that they're plants. They are animals covered with leaves. <laughs> and I'm like, OK. So I'm also interested in that idea of that there's already a layer of abstraction, that the leaf is not a botanical illustration, that it is actually, it's not realism. I'm not after realism. I'm after this sort of space between all sorts of things. I have this thing I do with my students sometimes who first come to uh, hand building or ceramics, which is I have them um, invent you know, 25 different ways of touching the material and making a mark. And what's so interesting is how many ways you can use your hands to create pattern. And uh, you know, I think I'm really a believer in constant invention and constant experimentation and that it's not all been done. I kind of challenge my students to find and develop their own language with the material. I ask them to name or the action of each of those marks, and so they, you know, it's the two-fingered poke and the five-fingered, you know, squeeze and the punch and the, you know, and it's just and the slap and the, the chin butt and the knee, and it becomes this kind of great spoken word kind of poem when I ask them to read them aloud. But then it also gives them a sense of like the kind of infinite possibilities of what can happen with mark making and this particularly amazing tactile material. And I think that's really what I've always long been interested in, is how can we generate new forms? How do we, um, how can we, do, how can we break open the possibilities in making? Mm -hmm.